I'm Stacy, and this is uh, Bluebird Paper and Thread. I am a brand new YouTuber. Well, we'll see how this goes. I've often been told that I should teach. I've been crafting for many, many years, and I've often been told, oh, you should teach. You should teach how to do this. You should teach how to do that. And I finally just decided, well, why not try on here? Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, as you can tell by my background here, the paper is because I... I love paper. I love paper crafting. My two main paper crafts that I do are card making and scrapbooking. And I also like to make little gift card holders and gift boxes and treat bags and things like that uh, for the people that I care about. And sometimes I, I sell at a craft show. Sometimes I don't. I've also made uh, bags and purses and makeup bags and I sell those. I do have an Etsy shop, but it's been on vacation since 2017 because I have not had time. Um, but I do enjoy sewing as well. So I'm also hoping that I can get back into, I've, I've stuck a toe into the quilting world years and years ago and I did enjoy it. And I would like to try to get back into it again. Now that I have a dedicated uh, crafty she shed. I'd like to get back into a little bit more quilting and just see what I can do with that. Uh, I am in Southern California. It's not very sunny today though. It is uh, a little drizzly and rainy. We're expecting um, some rain today and storm tomorrow, which is I believe New Year's Eve day. I'm, I've been off work for a week, so I'm not quite sure what, what day it is, but I believe it's Friday. December 30th and uh, we will um, we will be enjoying the weekend in and just a nice quiet quiet weekend uh, I would like to jump right in this is floss tube video number one I uh, have been spending the last year or so uh, cross stitching we had been doing some remodeling that took months and months and months and months and months and it's finally finished um, and then in the meantime, somewhere in there, my daughter moved back home, which meant that my craft room went in the garage and in the living room and it was all over the place. So really the only thing I could focus on for any length of time was uh, cross stitch. Um, I started, I picked it up. My mom had some heart surgery a year ago, November. And so we sat with her for a couple months. She had a little hiccup. In her recuperation, she's fine. She's doing great. She's like a 60 year old again, even though she's 82. Um, she's doing really, really great. And so um, while I was sitting with her, I picked up cross stitching and I fell back in love with it. So now along with hoarding paper, <laughs> collecting paper, I also collect cross stitch patterns and I have great ambitions. I really like uh, stitching on linens. Um, 40 count is my preferred, um, even though it can be challenging on my eyes from time to time. I do like a 40 count linen. Um, 36 count is good. I really do like stitching on, um, small items. Um, I do enjoy samplers. Uh, I will have some samplers up, um, but for the most part, I'm looking for small pieces that I can tuck on a shelf or put on a tear tray or in a dough bowl or a, a tray of some sort in the house or here in my craft room. So uh, that's what I'm kind of focusing on. That's why I prefer the, the higher count linens because they work up a little smaller. So that's just... That's just my preference at this point in time. I'd like to start off this floss tube. I have one fully finished item. Uh, I do I do love it. This uh, was one that I finished um, in the early 2022 and I, I absolutely love it. It's a Lori Holt. I think this one's called Flower Garden. Let's see if I can get a little closer so you can see. I I loved every, every minute of this. I loved the colors. I loved the stitching. I, I liked how everything was in a box. So when I'd sit down, I'd focus on that box. I tend to start in the lower, well, when I'm holding the stitching, I start in the lower right corner and I work my way out from there. And that's, uh, and I kind of work in, you know, I work here and I spread out that way. And that's, uh, 
every time I sit down and do a box, I just, I couldn't stop and I had to move on to the next box. I, I did, I feel I did this in record time. It really didn't take me very long, maybe a couple weeks tops to get this done. I took it to Hobby Lobby to get it framed. I think they did a really nice job. Uh, I don't think I could have done better. I don't think anyone else could have done that much better. Uh, very, very pleased with it. I did purchase the museum glass. I thought if I love this that much, that I should go ahead and have the museum glass put on it so that I can look at it. I mean, I know you're seeing a little bit of a glare from the light and perhaps from the window reflecting into it. But for the most part, you can look right in and see the stitching and that's what I wanted. If I'm gonna go to all the trouble of stitching this and I love it that much, I might as well spend the extra money and it was double, double the price for the museum glass and that's that's what I did on this one. I just, I treated myself and I did, I did the museum glass and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I am in my new crafty she shed and there's a lot of blank space. So my goal is to um, fill it up. I'm gonna put some shelving up. I'll have some more room for some, um, some you know, places like shelf sitter type things. And then I'm, I'm gonna start filling in the walls with my, with my cross stitch work. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be in here a lot and I, I wanna enjoy it. And so why not hang it up where I can see it every day? So that's it. Um, what I've stitched over the last year. Well, let's, let's dig right in. I will find these patterns. I did not pull them out, um, but I will find the patterns as we go through these and I will list them uh, in the description box below so that if you are interested, you can, you can check them out. Uh, I have started stitching the monthly um, cottage design from, I believe it's Little House Needleworks. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I started with June So I got that one done. I, I did a lot more of these than what I originally thought I did. I'm not really liking this linen. I'm not sure what linen it is, but it's by Witchelt and it just, it's not really my favorite. So I think when I am done, I'm working on October and I believe October is the last piece on this linen that I have. What I think I'm going to do is move to a 14 count Fiddler's Cloth Ada. Um, Ada is probably my least favorite to stitch on, although there's nothing wrong with it. I do, I do like it. I just prefer the, the look of linen. I, I think it does elevate the piece a little bit. And that's just, that's just me. So that was June. This is July. Red, white, and blue. And then August, August is my birthday month. So I really had fun with this one. I like the blue. I think it's really pretty. I got some seashells and a seagull. Looks like a lake house. And then September, sorry, this one didn't get ironed. Sorry, it's, it is what it is. I realize uh, as I'm stitching these, I'm, I, I'm really drawn to houses. I really like the look of them in stitched pieces, but when I'm stitching them, I don't like them so much. And I think it's the repetitiveness. I think it's, um, they're sometimes really big and there's a lot of fill in work. And I think that bores me a little bit, but when I get them all done, I fall in love with them all over again. So I don't anticipate ever stopping, uh, stitching my houses because I do enjoy them. Uh, I also did an elf on the shelf. This is a more recent finish. My elf on the shelf. I am not one that really likes elves for Christmas, although I will say they are growing on me. My husband um, bought an elf on the shelf when our children were pretty much grown adults. And I was like, yay, I don't have time for elf shenanigans and the kids don't care. Uh, so he just sits out every Christmas. I stick him in a corner and he just kind of watches over everything and he doesn't get into any trouble. He's no trouble at all. Uh, but I liked this little stitch and I thought, oh, it would be really, really cute. 
I'm hoping that I can finish it and that it will fit on the sled that came from 141 Design. Uh, Chantelle's uh, did a sleigh in the mystery box for the winter or, or the holiday season, the fall. And there's a sleigh in there. And I'm hoping that this will fit on that. I just thought it would be really, really cute. If it does not, I did find two different styles of sleds at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to see if maybe I can finish it and put it on one of those. Uh, I just think it would be really, really cute sitting on a shelf somewhere. I love it. it I think it turned out really cute. Um, the next piece is also a holiday piece, and um, I forget what this one's called, but I believe it was by Fat Quarter Shop. Maybe, Shop. Maybe it's so Emma. The when I was kitting it up, the called for fabric was um an aqua color with some dots with like snow falling. It was a little light, almost reminded me of daytime. So when I couldn't find that fabric because it was out of stock, I found this one and it's a charcoal and it's got little glittery, it's hard to tell, glittery stars and you can kind of see the metallic, maybe they're more metallic than glittery, stars and triangles. And I thought, oh, this looks like a really nice Uh, night sky. So I thought, let's go ahead and try it. I did buy the frame that they uh, showed in their finish, and I'm hoping that when I frame it, I can get some of the stars uh, in, in the top so that you can see it. Because once I started stitching, I realized that they are kind of spaced out a little far. It looks good like this, but will it look good in the frame? I'm going to work on it and hopefully it'll get, it'll look good. I also did Be Ye Thankful by Brenda Gervais. She is one of my favorite designers. I just, I tend to go for more primitive items. Um, so this one really spoke to me. I just, I loved it. I loved the colors, of course the house, the birds. It just was very warm and inviting to me. Um, I did this, I'm not sure if I did it on the called for fabric, but I did use the called for flosses with the exception of the bird. Um, the birds I changed. The color that they wanted, I felt like it was going to blend too much into it and it wasn't gonna pop. So I just, I picked a little bit darker, darker thread. If I wrote that down, I will put it in the description box alone. I mean, down below. <clears throat> I also worked on these little guys, little squirrels. I'm sure like everywhere we've got we've got squirrels here and they torment the dogs, so I had to make these up. Little guy. And then the lady. Her bow did not work out very well. I will have to fix it, which I can do very easily. I'm thinking these will be made into little pillows. We'll see. They were fun. This is another one. I believe it was a freebie from a year or two ago by Brenda Gervais. So I found the pattern and I printed it out and I stitched it up. I do love it. I saw it finished on uh, Facebook. I believe uh, someone finished it on a block, a wooden block with a ribbon around it. I loved it. So I might, I might try to do that kind of a finish. I did find in my stash as I'm moving into my craft room some red sparkle, um, I don't think it's floss, I think it's more like a thread. I might try to go over Rudolph's nose with a little bit of the sparkle because I think his nose needs to glow and, and shine a little bit. So I might add that right before I finish it off completely. But I had fun with this one. And then this one was supposed to be done by this Christmas and it didn't get done. I mean, the stitching got done, but it didn't get fully finished. Heaven and Nature Sing. I do not believe that this is the called for fabric, but it is the called for threads, flosses. I believe they were weeks and color, uh, classic color works. 
Weeks Dye Works. I picked the charcoal gray uh, intentionally because I thought these colors would pop off of it. And, and I think they do. Um, I'm going to trim it with a chenille trim in about that, that light blue color, aqua color around the edge. I think it'd be really, really cute. Uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTubers and one of my favorites is um, the proper stitcher and she always says counting is hard and counting is hard and she had done this one I believe and so of course I had to get it in bluebird so it sold me right away because of the bluebird um, but I think this one turned out really really cute I'm, I'm so excited that it it worked up quickly and it's cute and I am going to frame it and hang it in my craft room because counting is hard, which is why sometimes we have to rip chunks of our workout to fix a mistake or not. <laughs> Depends on what you think. Um, this one I started years and years and years ago. I don't know if it's been decades, but it's been at least 10 years. It might even been 15. I mean, I suppose it could have been close to 20 years, but I don't know. I have one similar to this. <coughs> excuse me coming um this week i caught the coronavirus so i've been on the tail end of that it's been quite a year anyways i have one of these already framed in my living room and it's a bluebird of course pulling a basket of flowers and it's really really cute so when i saw this one i love halloween and i thought oh i gotta make that up so i did i did i did mess up somewhere along in the cat and i couldn't I couldn't fix it. I got very, very frustrated. So it went into timeout for, like I said, 10, 10 or more years at least. Um, and it was one that I picked up and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to finish this. So I finished it. The only thing I need to do is the wagon needs some button wheels and I haven't found my buttons yet. I mean, they're probably somewhere in the garage. I was going to find them, look for them on uh, Wednesday of this week, but you know, the Rona got me down. So that'll have to wait another till another day but when I do finish this off it'll probably go into a frame um and it'll have button wheels <clears throat> and last but not least I did the jelly the Brenda I think it's Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread um the jelly bean jubilee so I did this one And hop, hop, pippity, hop, hop. These will be finished into pillows. This fabric is a little different from the other fabric um, that I'm going to show you right now. It's a smaller count, so those will definitely work up smaller. And I, I'm, I would like to stitch these or make these all into pillows, and I know I stitch them really, really close, so it will be tricky. But um, I am a, an experienced sewer, so I think I can make it work. It'll just, I'll just have to be really careful. So this is going to be a little bit bigger pillow, but I love it. I think it's so cute. I love those little bees. I think they're cute. This one needs to be finished. I need to put a string going uh, through their wings and into the cart so that they're pulling the cart. And then this one, I think I'm going to swap out. Hold on, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to swap out the string. I don't really like the way that looks. Um, so I might, I think it's six strands. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna take it out. I might do three strands. Maybe I'll braid it and I'll tie a little knot on the end because I think that's what bothers me about this one is it's just, loose and fraying and I don't I don't really care for it and then the last one of course is the bunny painting the Easter egg so those will be ready for spring and I lied I've got more over here I also stitched 
Um, and I, again, I probably stitched these a little too close. Um, but I stitched these for Valentine's Day. I believe, again, this is, I don't remember the name of the pattern book, booklet, but it, again, is by Brenda Gervais. This one's my favorite, the Be Mine. I just, I love the lettering on it and the birds, <laughs> of course. That looks backwards. Sorry if that's backwards to you guys. And then this one didn't show up as, as much as I was hoping. You know, I've kind of learned a little bit of a lesson. You know, when you do a floss um, toss onto your fabrics, which means you take all of your colored flosses and you lay them out on your fabric to see if they're going to show up or not. Um, what I should do, this is one over two. I should separate out a strand, and I think I'm going to do that from now on, and lay it on, if, it, if I'm going to do one thread over two, I'm going to separate one thread out and I'm going to lay it down. And if I can't show up, then I'm, I'm going to pick a different floss because this you can barely see. And then of course the little, the little gal in the cup. I'm not much um, for Valentine's Day. It is, honestly, it's never been one of my favorite holidays. Um, but I do enjoy decorating for it. Um, I like the hearts. I like the red. I think I think the red is and the pinks are cheery. And they, you know, hint towards spring, even though you're, you know, in really, really cold weather. Um, I might back these um, with this little heart fabric. Or I have a polka dot, a red and white pin dot and I have this fabric and then I pulled this one I have a little bit of this left it's um, a glitter fabric of pink uh, pink and red and fuchsia hearts a light pink a dark pink and a red glitter we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens with that one uh, one of them also has a key on it so I found these keys from Etsy maybe, so I'll pick one of these keys and I'll attach it to it as well. I think that'd be cute. I also worked on the <clears throat> St. Patrick's Day. These pillows will be a little bit bigger. This one is Oh Lucky Day. And then the Leprechaun. He was a lot of fun to stitch up. I really, really liked him. And then a top of the morning to you. I think these will make really, really cute um, pillows. And then last but not least, I I'm pretty patriotic. Um I enjoy stitching patriotic. I enjoy decorating patriotic. Um, so I did the red, white, and bloom. I think, again, um, I think it's Brenda Gervais. If I'm wrong, please forgive me. I will, again, I'll find them all and I will list them in the description as much as I can anyways. But these are going to be pillows for a tear tray. Oh, I did that one already. This one, I think it's cute. I was on the struggle bus today. Can you see that? I can't even see what I'm doing. And there's that one. I love the bald eagles. We, um, years ago, took a trip to Yellowstone National Park and the number of bald eagles you can see, I was just flabbergasted. They are such gorgeous birds to see in the wild. And she's cute. Again, with the bees. I just, I just can't with those bees. They're so cute. I like the sunflowers. They remind me of my grandmother. My grandmother came from Kansas, and she... She loves sunflowers, so um, 
Anytime I get to add a sunflower into a stitch, I really like it. So that's it for my stitches, my finished objects. I do have quite a few whips. I'm not going to show them to you today. We'll be here for a really long time. Um, what I will do is with my next video, what I, I, I will stitch through from now until the video and then whatever I work on from this point forward will be included in the whip section of my next floss tube video. Uh, I do have a haul. I have part of a haul. I went on to Annabella's Needlework Etsy shop. Annabella's Needlework, I'm not sure. She's lovely. She's a YouTube channel as well. And uh, when I bought this pattern, I bought a bunch of patterns, like maybe three patterns and a couple of trims. And then my husband, you know, went ahead and gave them to me for Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so I when I bought this, I was coming off of the turkey high of Thanksgiving. Um, it is called Be Thankful by Samplers and Primitives. Again, I really lean towards the primitive patterns. Excuse me. <coughs> I love the little turkey on this. I think it'll be really cute, made up just like it is in a little pillow. So I will kit this up and it will be in, included in um, like late summer stitching probably so I have a chance to finish it up. But... Um, that's, that's it for now. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I do work full time for a local nonprofit. My goal is going to be to do a video once a week. We will start off on the weekends, um, doing one video a week, uh, maybe on a Saturday or Sunday. I don't know. We'll see and get it posted for you. Um, maybe I'll be able to do more. I don't know. Uh, my nonprofit does run several camps during the summer, which means in the spring and the summer when we're training and um, running the camps that I am working a lot more hours and a lot more tired. So we will see. My goal is still to do one video um, because this is my respite. It's what recharges me. It what It's what I have to do something crafty or I get really, really crabby. So that is my goal. I'm hoping that by being accountable to you uh, will keep me accountable with my crafting and my stitching. You can keep me moving forward in it. I never want to be stale and stop. So um, that's it for me. That's the goal. I'd like to keep my videos fairly short between 30 and 40 minutes. I know I struggle to watch videos that are longer than that. I'm not saying that there won't be a longer one in here every once in a while because they, there might be. Uh, but my goal is to keep them fairly short, 30, 40 minutes tops, um, get in, get out so you can get on with your day. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, please like and share, um, comment if you would like to. I'd love to hear from you. Um, other than that, I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.